Greetings in the Lord. I'm Kevin Reddick, one of the pastors of the Soso Community Church located just north of sunny Tucson, Arizona. Uh, normally, I would take this opportunity to rub it in a little bit regarding the fantastic weather here, especially for the frozen chosen of northern Minnesota. But it's mid-June here. This is our hottest time of the year. And we're hoping for monsoon rain soon to get some relief. And we're generally paying the consequences for the great weather the other nine months of the year. So now's your time to gloat and be thankful weather-wise, at least, that you're not here. For quite a number of years now, we as a church have provided some measure of support to the Grace Training International Bible Institutes. We just call them the Grace Institutes, which is a ministry of Duluth Bible Church. Why have we chosen to do this? It's a reasonable question. In fact, it's not uncommon for those new to our fellowship as they examine our missions program, which we present to them often. They'll ask, why are we supporting another church? And that gives us an opportunity to sit down and explain uh, what this ministry is about and make it clear that we're not supporting another church per se, but rather a missions effort of that church. And what we're doing is help provide the materials and the other expenses that are associated with the training of pastors and church leaders in foreign countries. Of course, that still begs the question, why have we selected this ministry to support? We, we do provide support to a number of missionaries uh, individually, as well as a missionary enter enterprise, so why this particular uh, ministry? Before answering, I'd like to give a little bit of history of our own missions efforts. Our particular fellowship has always been a missions-minded fellowship, but mostly that consisted of sending a rather large amount of money to a missions organization and then, frankly, not having much idea of how it was specifically used. And so we became a little bit disenfranchised for what little we could find out of, about the specifics of how what we were donating was used. And so we decided to take control of our missions effort ourselves. We became what we uh, call a church-directed missions program. We uh, uh, recruited and selected individuals to support. We uh, established a set of criteria for what we were looking for, and then uh, looked for enterprises to support. Typically, smaller ones where we would know exactly what was happening, what the potential was, how we could pray for the people involved, and have some kind of involvement if possible. Uh, an interesting thing along the way is we were able to communicate the specifics of who and what we were uh, supporting. There was a huge increase in interest among our church fellowship and a huge increase in support as well. Well, one of those enterprises that we chose to support from our very earliest days as a church-directed missions program was the Grace Institute Missions Ministry of Duluth Bible Church. And of course, that brings us back once more to why. Why did we choose them? I'd like to walk you through a number of reasons for. Uh, there are more, but these are the ones that in particular resonate with me. First of all, I am unabashedly a church person. Now, I know what you're thinking. Of course you are. You know, you're the pastor of a church. But actually, my commitment to the local church and, and the church in general came long before I was a pastor. As I study God's Word, it became clear to me that the principal entity in God's plans and purposes for today is his church. So when I find a church doing what the Bible calls us to do, it just greatly blesses me, and I, I desire to be a part of it. In fact, even in our own area here, we're, we're closely located with uh, one of the world's uh, great translation organizations. But, but even then, what, what I tell our congregation we are trying to do is we support uh, missionaries who are involved in translation work is we're trying to reach out our arms as it were and and touch their efforts at translation to bring them under the umbrella of the local church why because god desires to work through and bless ministries of the local church a second reason uh, is the obvious indication of these grace institutes being a spirit-led endeavor and and, and i want to say right up front i don't say that lightly but, but here's what I see, and, I, and I've had the opportunity to look at the development of uh, these Grace Institutes for a, a lengthy period of time, and, and I may not have all the details right because I'm looking at it from the outside in, but here's what I see. 
First of all, the church, Duluth Bible Church, decided to train men. They were unhappy with what they saw in terms of seminary training. They wanted to be involved with planning churches, developing church leadership, so they developed an in-house seminary. What is, in effect, an in-house seminary to train men? Uh, and, and they were successful at it. They were able to plant churches, had uh, many men trained and women trained uh, with respect to leadership issues. And then when they became uh, interested in missions, uh, what they did is they, they looked at themselves and said, w what do we do well and what can we export as a missions effort? Well, they train pastors is what they do. Uh, and so they took a, a huge uh, step of faith uh, must have taken a great deal of courage at the time and to say, hey, can we, can we take our, our uh, seminary and export it to places where uh, there is a church established but no training for the pastors involved? So this is a church not, not much bigger than we are here who's had a tremendous impact by starting a work of training pastors first in El Salvador, then Nicaragua, uh, uh, Africa, South America, a little bit into India, uh, Myanmar, uh, lately the Philippines. It's just uh, hard to imagine that one local church could have this kind of impact uh, unless it was indeed a spirit-led endeavor. In fact, this has caused us to ask of ourselves, to look at ourselves and say, what do we do well and how could we export that as a ministry? Uh, it doesn't have to be to foreign countries, but how could we export what we do well as a ministry that might somehow be used of the Lord to advance his church. I think this is what every church should be doing, and we're very happy to support uh, one particular church who's so far ahead in this area and hope that we might take steps to catch up. A third reason why we're uh, happy to support this ministry is that this kind of approach is so effective at leveraging resources and spiritual gifting. Uh, what, what I mean by that is they're already at work uh, training men within the church, and when they export these, uh, when they export their uh, their seminary, in essence, to to other countries to train men, they're taking the men they've trained themselves, finding men in other countries who they can train, who are uh, in turn uh, able to teach others. This is directly what Second Timothy two tells us to do. Uh, it's just such a logical extension of their own ministry, of the gifted people uh, as a church, within the church, the gifted people in the church who can then go out and be part of these uh, trips. Uh, the pastors teach their congregations, and a lot of the work of this ministry is done by gifted people who have been taught within the congregation. It's not all pastoral. Uh, it also has provided an opportunity for us to have some direct involvement to help uh, with, with conferences, to uh, send individuals down to those, or to send a pastor on one of the trips. So again, we're just thankful for that opportunity. And then lastly, uh, I, I am just uh, so taken with the impact. What, what happens uh, when you look at the obedience of one church to the scriptural mandate uh, to engage in missions from the local church. It, it's so encouraging to see the, the outcome of that. Uh, the direct feedback has to be great for them and it's a blessing to us. You know, I, I, we have a number of translators associated with our fellowship and I, and, and I just marvel at the perseverance that they show when they, they go into a, a country in their, in their 20s and spend basically their entire adult life learning the language and, and getting a, 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 uh, uh, the New Testament translated into the indigenous language of the people. It just takes tremendous perseverance to do that and, and we're thankful for their efforts. But for many within the church, I also think it's a great blessing to see a more direct impact. And that's what these Grace Institutes have. They encourage us along the way. I watched, for example, a recent video from a man who is a, a pastor that was trained in the Grace Institutes down in El Salvador, who now continues to work there as a national. And, and, and it wasn't about the quality of the work, how, how slick it was, how smooth it was. In fact, there, it was in Spanish and the, the English uh, subtitles were, were kind of a homemade effort. And, you know, none of that would, would, would pass muster in any of our, any, any our entertainment-driven churches of the day. But in listening to this man, here is what I heard. When, when, the, uh, when the folks from Duluth came to hold their first workshops and conferences, even before a Grace Institute, this man was a pastor of a church who realized he was lost and he got saved. 
And then he started growing under the ministry of, these, uh, of, of the ongoing workshops and then the Grace Institutes. He began to grow and he could teach what he learned to his own congregation. And then he started to train uh, other pastors. Uh, now he's multiplying that ministry in a number of Grace Institutes within his own country, and those men are going out to neighboring countries. In fact, they've even sent some people from El Salvador back into the U.S. to minister to El Salvadoran populations here in the U.S. You, you, you just don't find a church involved in missions being able to have this kind of impact and how encouraging it is uh, certainly to the people in Duluth, as well as to the people here who have some small part in supporting these efforts. So in conclusion, we are blessed to be able to provide support, blessed for the times that we have been able to partner, uh, and we've been challenged to look at ourselves and see how we can begin our own work along these same, same lines. As I said, there's not a lot like this going on today, and we're thankful for the opportunity to be part of what God is doing and blessing. God bless and thanks for listening.